Hi guys, it's Magdalena from Love That's My Photography and um, today I'm starting off with a new video series to celebrate the new year. Yay! Um, a few weeks ago I had a, I've done a bit of a shout out on social media and I've asked you to send me any questions that you might have in um, regarding wedding photography. So um, I've received a few wedding question or wedding photography questions in the past and I thought if some people are asking those maybe it's worth to do some video series on it or some videos in general about it and um, help others with the same question as well. So we're starting off this um, video series with my very first question that I've received um, and it was from Jennifer and I received it via email. So I'm just backing up a little bit. Um, I'm just starting out as a photographer, not doing it professionally yet, but I'd really like to experience, uh, to expand, excuse me, my portfolio and get experience. So my question is how to create a wedding portfolio when you're just starting out. I thought this was a really good question because um, we've all been there, we've all started somewhere and um, so I went through my head <laughs> um, and thought about five different reasons or five different ways to expand your portfolio when you're just starting out. So there might be more, there might be less, um, some, some of the tips that you don't find valuable at all, some of them, you know, there might be others out there as well. So, but here are my five key tips for you to expand on your portfolio. So tip number one, being a second shooter. A second shooter basically um, follows around, follows the main photographer on a wedding day um, around. He or she shoots um, little details and things like, um, you know, mingling shots where the main photographers may be held up with other things at the moment. So then you could sort of capture moments in between, different angles during the ceremony, things like that. I mean, the, the photographer, the main photographer will brief you exactly on what's to, what is expected of you. But I think in general, it could give you really good insights on how um, a photographer works and if you're doing multiple weddings via like being a second shooter it gives you really good insight on um, you know how they work maybe you you can adapt some of their ways or you know you think oh no this I would do differently whatever it is but it helps you like narrow down your own ways and your own style so I would however caveat this a little bit um, you have to check with the photographer um, that you're second shooting for whether you're allowed to use any of the photos for your portfolio. This, I mean, like I said, it's a big, a big thing that you can use. M most of the times, I, I think you can use some of the photos. It really depends. I mean, especially during the portrait session, he or she, um, the main photographer might have like a big setup and, you know, has this creative way of whatever the portrait is. And then you're using that as your photo on your website, which isn't really true because at the end of the day it was the main photographer's couple it's the main photographer's um, setup but in general if they are happy for you to use any of the images then that's a great way to a gain experience in general being at a wedding with a professional wedding photographer but then also um, yeah get some portfolio images so tip number two is to attend a workshop with a practice session so a lot of wedding photography workshops um, have a section where you know the photographer um, hires maybe a model and you, you go out in the streets and you shoot something, um, whatever the workshop is. Um, again, you should check whether you're able to use those images on your portfolio, but a lot of times you are. Um, and I, for example, I've done that in the beginning when I started out. I attended a workshop and used those images that we were allowed to use. So it was a good way to just, you know, have a little bit of fun, see what the main photographer is, get to know other wedding photographers. It's a good networking tool as well. So that might help. So definitely check that out. Tip number three is see whether you have any friends or relatives that might get married soon um, and they don't have a photographer yet, might be on a budget, you know, they so you can maybe do it either for free or you can shoot at least for, you know, very low price. Don't undersell yourself, but um, just to gain some experience and to gain some photos that you could use. Um, the pressure, it's a bit of a twofold. On the one side, you, you don't have the pressure of obviously delivering a paid product. So on the other hand, you don't want to, you know, you, it's their big day. You still want to deliver good images for them. So um, it's a different kind of pressure, I guess. But it could be a really good experience for you because eventually you have to get out there anyway. So 
Um, why not do it for friends and family and, you know, have some fun with it. Tip number four is hire models. Um, you can go out and, you know, get those models into a wedding dress or maybe even ask friends and family. Um, anybody who might be a young couple who, you know, could look, on, look good on your um, portfolio. But in general, I would just, you know, do a relax, just the three of you, go out there somewhere and, um, you know, pick a location that might look good and just do some shots with them and that might make it easier and you can get some experience with that in practice. And then lastly, a tip that not everybody, might not appeal to everybody or might not be the right thing to do for every, anybody, but um, is the style, organizing a style shoot. So you could, for example, get in touch with other people from the wedding industry. So like a like florist or like cake people or, you know, stationery or whatever it is. Um, and then hire models as well and, and get them, you know, into the wedding dress. So you can also be in contact with a bridal shop and um, get them all to collaborate together and then you're doing the images and maybe even one of the per people that are already in the industry they know people where to be featured in at a blog or a magazine or anything so it could be a really good um, experience get some links into your website get some publicity as well out of it so maybe it's something that you want to do later on maybe it is um, I mean I haven't I've done a few style shoots in the past but I've not done them to in the beginning to start out with, so it might be something that you might consider later on. Um, but it's still, in general, a good experience, again, to use those images. But then also you getting to know a little bit of uh, your people around you in your local area and um, to network with other wedding industry people. So yeah, there you have it. Um, this I hope that this was helpful to you. Um, Jennifer, I also hope I answered your question. And um, I hope you get some experience out of this and um, some, you know, you can get on and, and practice and um, expand on your portfolio. So if you have any other wedding photography uh, questions that you might like to get answered for or, you know, you just can't find any other resources out there or just anything that you just think of while you're watching this, please leave me a comment below or get in contact via my website or anything. I would love to hear from you. and. Um, Maybe if you have that question, then other people might have the same question. So anyways, if you really like, if you like this uh, kind of video series, like I said, I'm just starting out. So hopefully you did enjoy it. Um, if you did, please like and, you know, share and comment and subscribe. I would love um, to just get this uh, a regular occurrence and maybe even get some other photographers interviewed to answer your question. So, um, yeah, let me know. I would love to hear from you and I'll see you next time, hopefully. Um, have a lovely day. Bye.